cut in Master John. 28 feet in the air. Having a ball with no oxygen. This is Chris the Idaho Painter back here at the Million Dollar Home for the third day and check it out. Today is sunny. This is Idaho weather. So yesterday was snowing and I was in a jacket freezing and now today it's all nice and sunny. Nice day, but we're working in this home in another just crazy unusual situation. Kind of really weird. I'm going to take you um, into our van, give you a look at one of our vans and what it looks like. But we're working in this home, multiple contractors. We've got demo guys ripping doors out, trim out. They're going to be replacing doors, replacing tile, replacing carpet. So everything's being torn out. They're tearing out cabinets, um, just doing just crazy stuff, installing pocket doors. But all these people, it's kind of unusual because usually what you would have is a situation where you would uh, come in, we would be kind of one of the last people to come in and do our job. And so when I took on this job, when I bid it, I assumed everybody was going to be gone and out of here and we would start the painting process and uh, be one of the last ones out. And when we showed up, all these contractors were in the house. It was crazy madhouse. Vlogs, we've covered things with plastic. Nothing was covered with plastic. We're using drop cloths on floors even though we know they're gonna be ripped out because we're just gonna do what it takes, what it takes for us to attempt to protect you know, the customer's belongings. We're not spraying anything in here. All we're doing is rolling walls, so we're not having to overspray and dust like that in there. But it's been just kind of a, just this weird, unusual situation. And, and I mean, to me, I'm not a cleaner, but I would think you probably got $20,000 worth of cleaning, you know, in that house. And so we're going to walk in there and see what, you know, I'm going to show you what's going on in there today, our third day. Yesterday, we tackled doing some of the uh, ceilings, 28 foot up there, the cut ends and stuff. I'll talk to you about a little bit about the problem we had in there. But here's one of the vans we're working out of. So you can just get an idea what it looks like, how we organize things. We got cut in buckets over here. We got hoses, um, extension cords, keeping drop cloths up here, pans and everything. We, we like Tupperware. Uh, um, Tupperware is not a sponsor of ours or anything, but everything's labeled in Tupperwares and stuff. So we know exactly where everything is. So when we walk in this van, we can grab something. We don't have to spend time looking for it. We know where it's at. We keep things you know, labeled on the walls typically with um, you know, tape. So we got plastic masters here, paper maskers there, all of our rollers there. Keep um, there's mask and stuff. So it's kind of what it looks like in a van. We've got magnetic holders right here that hold things and stuff. So it makes it you know easy, accessible to get to that kind of stuff. We do have Tupperware drawers down here, so you can get to you know tools and it's all labeled what's in those drawers. Over here we got shelves and stuff that hold spray cans, cardboard shields. We've got uh, brushes hanging up there, extensions. So kind of cool. Like the whole large van thing because our ladders can just go inside here. They don't have to be strapped on top of the van. We do have another van, as you can see over there, right there. That's uh, you know your you know traditional type of painting van, smaller van. But there's a little bit of look at the van. We'll go inside here and check out the guys. So what we're doing yesterday in our blog yesterday, we showed you painting. We had the ceilings are 25 feet in the air and we had to cut around some lights, kind of unusual situation. But you know how John went about tackling that. It's kind of funny because John painted around those lights way up there and then he realized he did the wrong color, had to cut him in it again. Today he was in here painting, you know, inside here doing cut-ins on the lower end in the same situation because we forgot to label buckets and the colors are very similar, the ceiling and wall color. So kind of kind of funny because now we got to redo cut-ins again. Um, you know, even as a as painter, some professional painter for a long time, you know, hey, we make mistakes every now and then. So no big deal, just correct it. But I'm going to show you I'm going to show you one of the uh, cool little toys that, as a painters we get to play with and it's the Graco handheld and I'm going to show you this thing. The pump went bad on it and I'll show you how easy it is to replace. All you need is one simple tool, a screwdriver and since I'm the video man, I'm going to have John 
show you how it's done in the powder bathroom. So, love the pressure roller. So I gotta take a phone call. Yes. You're um, on my blog live, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm filming, so, right now. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm helping you. This would be the daughter. You can, so go ahead, sit it on the shelf. So John's gonna take this thing apart and we'll take a look at this thing right here. And pretty simple, all it has is eight screws. So you're gonna take off these eight screws right here to replace this pump get you back running again we just the pump went bad contacted graco customer service and told them the pump went bad they had a few questions what we ran through and stuff no big deal kind of weird weird things shut off so john's continuing to just and all it is, is just a simple phillips head screwdriver so um you just unscrewing it and then it's really cool because the pump comes out really easy. You can literally put a brand new pump in this thing in five minutes. So then it'll get you back up and running. But Graco, I just um, gave him proof of purchase over the phone and they sent this thing out. We got, it took about a week to get it. And it's just a brand new pump and it literally just comes out. You just take these eight screws off. You take the one screw off the prime valve right here. And then that little pump is gonna just gonna just lift um, lift right out and the pump itself came in it this the new ones in here but it has a little this little green thing on it that holds the gear in place and it says do not remove definitely don't want to remove that gear until you you know put this new one in so here we're gonna so there's a little you know prime knob and it's as simple as this right here so he's gonna remove it and that's the pump right here so Here's our pump right here. This pump would just literally just lift out and then you just set the other one right back in and you're back in business once you screw it back together. It's as simple as that. Replacing a pump on a Graco Ultra or Ultra Max. Kind of cool. Thank you very much there, Journeyman John. Cool. So we're gonna take a look. Um, I'm gonna walk upstairs, show you some stuff. You know, upstairs, kind of some of the, the situations and stuff we deal with here you know, in this very unusual situation. So we're gonna kind of just have to work with all these contractors. There was somebody down there in that master bathroom. Looks like working on tile. We got some tile guys up here, but um, you can see we we're all finished up here. So we pulled all of our plastic. We had plastic covering, you know, some simple things. You know, like, like this room, when we walked in here, all the carpet was ripped out. They were demoing stuff here, but I'll show you just a close look. I don't know if you can see right here how dusty, you know, that is right there, but that was all from the demo from tearing out tile. You can see, you know, down here, this is all, um, looks like tile dust or something, but it's just everywhere. And, you know, kind of this was an interesting, I showed this before, but the guys, the, there was painted trim. So this was painted trim and doors and they're tearing this all off to install stained and lacquered trim and doors. And nobody, you know, cut this stuff off. We assumed this is the caulking where it was caulked to the wall. And we just assumed that they were gonna be installing, you know, trim that would cover that up. And so we painted right over it. But we found out by going and looking downstairs where they're already reinstalling this stuff, they're not even reinstalling it. This stuff is still exposed, so it becomes a big problem. So now we're having to you know, take uh, knives and try to cut this stuff off and then texture and hide it. So just a little bit of communication things. It's just kind of unfortunate where you know, um, there's no communication between the contractors to determine stuff like that. But you'll see where we're trying to cut it off now and then we're gonna have to spackle that and retexture it so it blends in nicely but you know once again here this was when we came in here and started painting this room we covered all this stuff in plastic we are only rolling the walls and here's you know a closer look right here of this dust 
on this equipment and all these electronics, man, they're just going to get completely filled with dust inside these things. So it's just extremely unfortunate, you know, the situation, but you know, even though the other contractors and stuff are not covering everything, we're still going to do, you know, what it necessary for us to, you know, limit the damage. I mean, so John, John's working down here. You can see this lad right here. Here's a situation that could be, you know, potentially dangerous right here, but we got a non-slip drop cloth right here. This extension, 28 foot extension ladder is sitting on a non-slip drop cloth that won't slide and move. So that's one way where, you know, we, we deal with, you know, situations like that, but we're staging all of our stuff in here now because we've moved from top to bottom down here, but we're, they're gonna be ripping out this flooring. When are they gonna rip out this flooring there, John? Like Monday. Monday, all this tile is gonna be, you know, ripped out in here. So it's absolutely crazy, crazy with all these um, contractors. This, this is why the pressure roller is convenient. sure how you do this if you just had to roll it actually we did do this before and I don't remember we must have just did it all with a like six years ago must have just used a 24 foot extension pole and did it from the ground is this I don't think they're I don't think it's on I haven't heard it pump some figuring out here got a little tricky situation we're gonna run into on this landing oh, it looks like you got something going on there there we go the pivot ladder box does it again In Captain Zach does it again. Blam. Blam. So John, how you doing? <laughs> Up here. It's like we're on Mount Everest together, getting to know each other. Taking in the country. Seeing all the sights. We do have a special guest down there doing the video in. Special guest. Special guest. That would be paint paint wife is down there doing the video in. Okay, let me see if you can do a bicep curl. Bicep curl? Whoa, look at the man go. Dang. He works out. Let's see if you can do a shoulder press. Up. Let's see if we can get it up. Look at this. Uh, we got Hulk Hogan here. Man. That's what I'm worried about. Impressive. <laughs> oh my gosh. Come on, you can do it. Bam. That's as high as I got it, man. Do a bicep curl. Come on. Damn. Oh yeah, we got the muscles. 
Now we're gonna have to start mount our own CrossFit team. We're in search of a hobbit. I know there's a hobbit around here somewhere. I think I found the hobbit. He's down inside his cave. <laughs> He's working in his little cave down there. The Idaho painter meets the Idaho hobbit. I think he's this way. Oh, there we found Captain Zach. Are you all done in the laundry room? Uh, just about. There's one wall left, but there's a bunch of stuff in there. So he's been, he's tried to cover things the best he can in here, but this would be the laundry room. And this would be not an ideal situation to be painting either. But once again, you have to do what you've got to do. John has any words of wisdom for the day. He's usually, you know, John, you have any words of wisdom for the day? Mm. Put He's, the right color where the right color goes. You won't have a day like I had today. Because <laughs> nothing sucks more than redoing all the work that you just did. Yeah. Well, there's your words of wisdom for the day. Words of wisdom.